Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Small Engines Questions and Answers. Now before I get started today, I want to thank all my new subscribers and I also want to let you guys know that I cannot get to every single question that is being asked of me. It's not that your questions are not important, it's just I get so many questions every day. So if you do see some questions asked by YouTubers in the comments sections of the videos and you can answer them, please go ahead. And I also want to let you guys know that if you follow me on Facebook, every month Discount Online Parts gives away some kind of gift or part or tool. You can enter if you follow me on Facebook. All you have to do is comment under that post. The link to my Facebook page is under the video. Just click on it and follow me on there to make sure you don't miss out on these giveaways. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Google+. The first question I'm going to answer today is what's the most common problem of small engines that you get in your shop? Well, the most common problem I get is equipment with bad fuel. If you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, you're often going to see pictures of equipment that I take. Often those are pictures of the bad fuel that I've taken out of that equipment. And it's a very common occurrence, especially since there's ethanol in the fuel. Another problem also for having water in your gas or fuel is because of neglect of your equipment. If you leave it out in the rain, somehow the water finds its way into the fuel tank or the carburetor and will cause you problems. And another common mistake that people do is they'll cover their equipment with a tarp outside. What that does is it causes sweating between the tarp and the engine of your equipment and moisture can form into the carburetor and the fuel tank as well. And what I like to use in the shop is this stuff here. It's K100. I bought this myself. This here product acts as a two-year fuel stabilizer. What this product does is if you have any water at all in your carburetor or gas tank, it will combine it together so that your engine can burn it. If I work on any equipment and I suspect that there's moisture or water in the fuel tank or carburetor, I pour a bit of this in just to be safe. And this container here can treat up to 37 liters of fuel. A question I often get from people who come in my shop and YouTubers is, I've cleaned the carburetor on my Honda lawnmower and the engine still surges. Well, my response to that is you can try to re-clean the carburetor in an ultrasonic cleaner and if that doesn't work, just replace the carburetor. This is a common problem that I run into here in my shop with the Honda carburetors on lawnmowers is that even if they're clean, the lawnmower still surges up and down. And the reason for that is that there could be some small passages inside the carburetor that are blocked or who knows what else is going on in these carbs and it will make your lawnmower constantly surge up and down regardless of how many times you clean it. Now if you live in the USA, these carburetors are very cheap to buy from Honda and sometimes you can get these carburetors for under $20 for an OEM one. So at that price, it's not even worth messing around to try to fix a carburetor that surges up and down. However, if you live in Canada, these carburetors will cost you at least $50 each year from the dealer. I don't know why it's so much more money here, but at $50, if your lawnmower is still in good shape, it's still worth replacing the carburetor. If you do repairs, you're better off to make sure that it's fixed right and that people will not come back. Another question I get here in the shop from people is how can I clean off this hard grass that is stuck on my lawnmower blade? Well, what I use is an angle grinder with a knotted wire wheel. Make sure you use the proper wheel that can handle the RPMs that your grinder has. And I've just went outside and taken some off and you can see it comes right back clean the way it should be. If you don't clean this grass off your blade, it may not cut as well as it should. It may not shoot out the grass out of the mower as good as it should and it may not send it to the bag as well as it should either. And if I flip the blade over, you can see that it's full of grass on the other side as well. But anyway, this is by far my preferred method to remove this grass from blades. And if you use this method, make sure that you wear safety glasses because this spins really fast and sometimes the wires off the wheel fly off. Now I just want to remind everybody I did make a video review on this Evolution metal chop saw and I want to remind you guys that you cannot use this blade just on any metal chop saw. This Evolution chop saw spins a lot slower than most metal chop saws. That's why it can handle this blade here with the carbide teeth. If you put this blade on any metal chop saw and it spins faster than this one does, you're going to wreck the blade. I just forgot to mention this during the video review of this tool. A lot of YouTubers pointed that out to me and I'm very thankful for that. And if you haven't seen the video review on this saw, I highly recommend that you go watch it and I'm going to put the link under the video today as well. And I just want to show you guys a jack I bought the other day. I posted this on my Facebook page and Instagram. It's a two and a half ton service jack. I bought it mainly for my pickup truck. 
but you can use this in your shop as well to jack up ATVs, lawn tractors and different equipment that you work on. Basically it came from Jet Tools, they're the ones that distribute this jack. This jack here regularly sells for $279 in Canada and I bought it on sale for $200. And by the way guys, I bought this jack at my local auto parts store. Another question I get from people is, how come I cannot pull over the engine on my lawnmower? It used to be easy to pull, I flipped it over to clean the blades, and now I cannot pull it over, it's just stuck. And actually guys, I do have a lawnmower in the shop right now that has this exact same problem. If I try to pull it over, it's really hard to pull. And there's actually oil coming out of the muffler onto the body itself. So the main problem with this lawnmower is that it is hydro-locked with oil in the cylinder. I've talked about this many times in my videos, but the same question keeps coming up and up again in my videos. So the best way to remedy this is take the plug out, pull the engine over, a lot of oil is going to squirt out, so do it in a place that you don't want it to get dirty. If you do it in your garage, just put a rag over the cylinder hole so that the oil coming out goes onto the rag. And you're also going to get a lot more oil coming out of the muffler, so put a rag here as well. And sometimes what I do is I spray quick start inside the carburetor just to get it going because there's so much oil in the cylinder chamber that it cannot ignite the fuel that goes in there by itself. And a good way to prevent this problem is do not tip your lawnmower up in the forward position because all the oil will go into the cylinder. And be careful when you take off the blade as well that the oil doesn't creep up in the cylinder because it will cause a hydrolock effect. By the way guys, I do have a video that shows how to fix this problem and I'm going to put that link under the video today. And here's a tractor brand that I don't see here in the shop too often, a Stanley tractor. And I think it's actually made by Murray and it does look well built. And this V-twin engine here is actually a Tecumseh engine, one that I don't often see here as well. It's very rare that I see a Tecumseh engine like this. And this one here is hydrostatic with the foot pedal. Anyways, please comment and let us know if you have seen one of these yourself. So that'll be it for today's video guys. Thanks again for watching and have yourselves a great weekend.